Hi, this is Mr. Doro. Today I'd like to introduce you to the types, different types of chemical reactions. The objective of today's lesson is that the student will be able to identify the type of chemical reaction that's taking place based on the reactants and predict the products. The first type of reaction we're going to talk about is a synthesis reaction. A synthesis reaction is when you have two reactants, remember the reactants are on the left side of the arrow here, and then they make they join together to make one product. That's what synthesis means. Synthesis means joining together. So when you see synthesis, you're thinking about joining together. If you look at this little cartoon over here, you can see that we had this skinny vulture bird thingamajabber here. And then he obviously is going to eat this worm. This is what we had before the reaction took place. And after he eats the worm, the worm and the bird are really together even though it just looks like the bird. Now this part here, the A plus B produces AB, is obviously just generic. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually write a formula, and we're going to say that um, potassium, K, reacts with oxygen, O2, because it's diatomic, to produce. Now, if this is a synthesis reaction, here's one way you would know it's a synthesis reaction. And when you look at the reactants, you see that you have a single element and another single element. The only thing they can really do is react with each other and join together. If they just switch places, then it wasn't a reaction at all. You didn't come up with some new products. So these two have to join together. Now here's the trick apart about this when you're joining them together. You always put the metal first, if there is a metal, in this case there is, and then you put the non-metal, but then just like before, we have to check the charges on the periodic table. Potassium has a plus one charge, it's in group one. Oxygen has a minus two charge, it's in group 16. So you have to crisscross applesauce, meatball in my soup. The two comes down here to make K2O. Now a common mistake that's made many times by students is they will just write this as it makes KO2 because you had the K plus the O2 right there. But you always have to remember to check the charges when you have an ionic compound for your product. One key to recognizing that this is a synthesis reaction is when you only have one product. I like to call that a key for kids. And so you probably want to write that down for synthesis reaction that if you have one product and then I want you to put a star next to it for synthesis because I'll say check the stars or look for your keys for kids. And if you see one product, synthesis reaction. The next type of reaction is a decomposition reaction. It's kind of the opposite of a synthesis reaction. So this word decomposition, this means to decompose or to break down. And so if you look at our sample reaction here, we have a compound, AB, you know it's a compound because it has two capital letters, breaks down to produce A and B. So it's the opposite of what we did for the synthesis. If you look at this little cartoon, you see that you have an egg. It's cracked a little bit, but inside the egg, well, I'm not going to tell you yet what's inside the egg, but this is the only reactant because we got the arrow right here next. Then we have the broken egg shell, and it was a turtle that was in there. So these are our two products. They are not joined together now. They're separated from each other, and that would represent what a decomposition reaction would look like. A key for kids for the decomposition reaction is look to see if there's only one reactant. So you want to write that down in our keys for kids. That's a star. One reactant. If you see one reactant, oops, reactant. Something doesn't seem right about that, but you see one reactant, then it's probably going to be a decomposition. It actually has to be a decomposition reaction. An example of a decomposition reaction would be if we had MgO, which we know is named magnesium oxide. We put the arrow because this is our only reactant, and it would break down. Now you got to figure out what it's going to break down to make. It can only make things that are inside of this um, formula at the beginning. So you cannot make carbon because there's no carbon in here. 
You cannot make um, silicon because there's no silicon. So we have to make magnesium and oxygen. And when we do this, remember, magnesium is just a metal. It's not diatomic at all, so it can stand alone. But oxygen cannot stand alone. It is diatomic, so it is O2. We'll worry about balancing these out later on. Right now, we're just trying to write the correct reaction. Next, we have single replacement reactions. In a single replacement reaction, the key for kids that we're going to be looking for is at the beginning, sorry about that, in the reactants, we're going to have a single element, and as you can see right here, we have a single element not bonded to anything else, and a compound, and it'll be an ionic compound most likely over here too. Remember in our compounds, we have the metal written first, and then the non-metal written second. And so if we look at our situation here, we have our single element, which is A, and then reacts with BC to form A and C have now joined up together. So that tells us something about A, the way it's written right here. The way it's written in this problem, you can see since A is written first, it had to be a metal. The metals are always written first. And so what will happen is the metal will come over here and will knock out the other metal and leave the other metal alone. So we have A and C have joined up together now, and we'd have to check the charges on that. And B is all by itself. If you look at our little cartoon here, we have this new guy that came to school here, and here's the guy and the girl, and I'm not trying to bring up any bad memories or anything, but at the dance, and then all of a sudden, this is all before the reaction, or before the reaction happens. This is, uh, those are the reactants. And then afterwards, then you can see, now this guy is dancing with the girl, and this poor guy is all alone by himself over there. So an example of this would be, let's say we have um, calcium, oops, wrong tool, calcium nitrate, which is CaNO3, checking the charges that would be taken twice, plus magnesium. You can see that we have a compound right here, and we have an, um, a single element. Oh, I was going to give you our keys for kids on this one, too. So let me give you the keys for kids. So there's my star. Um, on your notes, you should have keys for kids. And this would be a single element and compound. That's Both of those are together in reactants. That's what we're going to look for. So you need to have that written down single element and compound in the reactants. Okay, so back to this. They, we have a single element, we have magnesium, and we have our compound right here. Now, the magnesium is going to react with something, knock something out over here. In order to determine what it, re, what it knocks out, you have to see is it a metal or a non-metal. Magnesium is a metal, so it's going to take the place of the other metal over here. It doesn't really matter which one you write first. You could write the calcium all by itself, or you could write the compound. I'm going to write the compound first. It is magnesium, Mg. Notice I'm not carrying over this little uh, two subscript right here. I'm going to check the charges every time. So MgNO3, and then when I check the charges on that, Magnesium has a plus two charge, it's in group two of the periodic table. Nitrate has a minus one charge. So in this case, I do get a little two subscript. And then don't forget, I gotta put a plus because the other loner over here, this calcium got left out. And so I'm only gonna put just plain old calcium right over there. That's a single replacement reaction. The next type is a double replacement reaction. In a double replacement reaction, I've got a generic form right up here. AB, which is a compound, reacts with another compound to produce a different compound and another different compound. So our keys for kids on this one, when you're going to write on your notes, is for a double replacement reaction, we have two ionic compounds. That's the abbreviation for compounds in the reactants. You also will have two in the products, too. 
if you notice our cartoon right here, then we what is the difference here? I want you to check it out and see if, look at these two guys. We got the bigger boy here. This is before the reaction. This is after the reaction. See what's different about the big boy. And then skinny guy here, before and after. And if you can't tell, that's still the skinny guy and the big boy. But now we have this hat. The dark hat is on the skinny guy over here. And the light hat is on the big boy over here. For a real life uh, reaction here to show you one, um, let's pick on, um, we will do potassium hydroxide, KOH, reacts with, um, we'll do calcium sulfate, CaSO4. This is two ionic compounds in the reactants. And so what's going to happen here is we're going to have the old switcheroo. The metal from this ionic compound, the potassium, is going to replace the metal and the other compound. They're going to switch places. All right, so it doesn't matter which one you write first. And I'm just going to start with the one with pota potassium. There's the K, and that is going to get everything else that's over here. SO4 is sulfate, so it's going to get a SO4. But then we have to check the charges every ding-dong time. Potassium has a plus one charge. Sulfate has a minus two charge. So this is going to be K2SO4 plus, and then we got our calcium. We always write the metal first, calcium, and then the hydroxide, which is OH. Checking the charges, calcium has a plus two charge. Hydroxide has a minus one charge, and so we have to crisscross, and we get CaOH2. The last type that we're going to talk about is combustion of a hydrocarbon. Combustion means burning. Hydrocarbon means, really, it has hydrogens and carbons in it. So what we're looking for in the reactants, we're looking for something with hydrogens and carbons, and it could have oxygens also, and we're looking for oxygen as the other reactant because in order to burn anything, Oxygen needs to be present. So when we look at this, I want to write our keys for kids. And so here's our keys for kids for combustion. It will always react with oxygen to form. And this is weird, but it always is going to form the same thing, CO2 and H2O. It, carbon dioxide and water are formed from burning. So um, they may be different amounts of it, depending on what you started out with, but always react with O2 to form CO2, that's a 2, plus H, that's an H, believe it or not, H2O, every time. So that's our keys for kids that we're looking at. Um, it doesn't matter what, how many carbons, hydrogens, or oxygens we had in our initial uh, hydrocarbon. It just, will, we will take care of that later on. It will look the same from here on out, from the O2 on out. It will look the same. Just these numbers in front would change. Okay, here are seven different reactions represented in pictures. And so I'd like you to push pause here and look at each one of these. And on your notes, label it A through G. Look at your keys for kids and check out each picture and try to figure out which reaction type it would represent. This is an example of a combustion reaction that happens in our bodies. You can see that glucose, which is a hydrocarbon, reacts with oxygen to make water and carbon dioxide, produces heat in our bodies, and even though there's not a flame, it doesn't burn in our bodies, it is burning sugar. These are some reactions that are giving you just the reactants that you should be able to predict the products when you determine what type of reaction it is. So you should be looking at the reactants and looking at your keys for kids that we've gone over in this presentation and trying to determine what the products are. A little help for you, this one right here, uh, when you try to figure out what type of reaction it is and figure out what the products are, this is a little bit tough sometimes in this type of reaction, but when you have a chlorate, ClO3, then what this is going to make every time is a chloride compound and oxygen gas. So make sure you're checking the charges when you're writing these formulas as, as the products. 
and um, looking at your keys for kids. So go ahead and pause this and you can work on these problems.